Hello, welcome back to the show. I'm sure that you have a lot of questions in your head at the moment about how childhood trauma can actually uh, affect the biological effect of, of our body. And still with molecular biologist Riza Arif Putrando. So Riza, you are actually saying that the first 10 years of uh, a, a person's um, life could actually shape how they uh, reacting to uh, more trauma or the future encounter in life. So within that 10 years, which one is the most crucial one that you can pinpoint that this is actually the moment that a child would actually absorb everything yeah. more than uh, the other period? Yeah, I, I think uh, from the point of view of uh, brain development, it's the first five years. First mm. five years. The most important things. You can see a, a child go silent. Well, I was experiencing when I was live, when I was uh, uh, when I lived in, uh, in France. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I saw a, a, a child go silent for three years. For three because, years. Yeah, for three years. Oh. The silence. All people speaking French. You know. Mm -hmm. and suddenly, in the year four, he sees she was just uh, bubbling about French, much better than all of us adults. Oh. So, actually. She was absorbing everything in the first three years. Uh -huh. mm. So absorb, absorb, even all the, the what do you call in French, gromo, uh -huh. the, the bad words. Okay. So it's just, she's just saying it very fluently. Yeah. So what we are seeing is that, that a child can be silent for some moment and period of their life, but in the first five years, this is very, very important. For example, a cat. Mm. A cat, when during their life, after one year, their brain stays like a brain of two years old children, human child. Mm. So when you step out a, a, a cat, he or she, the cat, will remember it forever. Oh. For a human, you need five to ten years. Yeah. But the, fi the, the first five years is very, very important. Because when you have neglected a child at three years old, as a study said in 30 years ago, you will have a shrinking of a brain that is very difficult to modulate, you know, need to push it. She or he has already the trauma and can be or have the possibility to repeat the trauma in the future. Mm. Meaning that if he or she has a child, he might repeat what the parent did. So yeah. it's yeah, repetitive yeah. pattern. Yes. That, that would be a potential of repetitive yes. pattern. We are not saying yet or discussing yet about what we call intergenerational trauma. Yeah. Oh my God. Well, that's another. Intergenerational trauma is yeah. another thing. Yeah. yeah. We're talking about one individual. Yes. yes. But uh, human doesn't live alone. Yeah. Yes. Because they have their parents, they have their aunties, mm -hmm. their uncles, their siblings. Mm -hmm. Everything matters. Everything can influence your trauma too. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's why when you're saying I have trauma, but my family actually giving me the trauma, mm. it can be very sad uh, news to hear because uh, a family actually is one of the first foundation of a, of a, of a person. Yeah. True. When the family is actually not working very well, you are creating someone with a huge trauma. Yeah. So that, that is why when we are thinking about trauma, it's not to be seen only from psychology or psychiatry aspect. You need to be seen from also social aspects, mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. biological, even molecular biology. Thinking about what happened in brain cells mm -hmm. when you have trauma. You need to be able to understand it, but maybe the technology of the next 20 or 30 years can answer that. Mm -hmm. Ooh. So 10 years. <laughs> yes. No, first yeah. five, first years, five years, years and then uh, another five years. Yeah. Yeah. Golden years. Okay, so what happened if, if trauma remains for a long time and goes beyond 10 years old? What about yeah. long-term effect of it, the trauma? Yes, we have uh, what we call, before it was a theory 50 years ago, but now it's, not, not, it's no longer a theory, mm. what we call a mind-body connection. So I will give you one example, very easy example. Our brain is connected to our body from a uh, 10 cranial nerve here, from this uh, back of your head. Mm -hmm. yeah down to your chest, mm -hmm. your heart, mm -hmm. and then to your uh, digestive system, mm -hmm. and then goes down to liver, pancreas, and also etc. So when you, what bothers your mind can bothers your digestive system. 
like when you're thinking a lot, you have a, a illness in your stomach, mm -hmm. you have a palpitation of your heart mm -hmm. beating very fast, or you have a short breathness mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. of that. So what, is, what, what it means is that what your brain thinking can be connected with your physical body. When you have trauma, it reduces the activity of the brain to be balanced. Mm -hmm. So it reduces the activity of the body also to be balanced. Mm -hmm. So when you have trauma, it can in, uh, push your body to the limit. So you can have uh, physical diseases, many, many physical diseases. The one that we can see for easily, for sure, is yeah. raising of uh, heart tension, uh, blood pressure. Blood pressure. And then shortness of breath, mm -hmm. maybe GERD mm -hmm. or uh, you know, uh, gastric acid. Is it what we call psychosomatis? Psychosomatis at first, yeah. But when you have it for a long period of time, 10 yeah. years, 20 years, it becomes a physical problem, oh. real physical problem. Okay. So sometimes when you go to the doctor and doctors say that I cannot detect any problem in your physical body, but maybe the problem is not there. It's in your head. It's yeah, in your yeah. head, yeah. Oh. yeah, yeah. Try to fix it. Yeah. So fixing this head mm -hmm. is not easy as I'm saying it. Because yeah, yeah. it's a really, really neat. Because uh, you cannot see inside the brain of someone and, ah, mm. oh, the problem is... Uh, <laughs> it's it's yeah, yeah. going to be very easy yeah, yeah, to, yeah, yeah. to resolve. But now we cannot do it. We can, you have to ask. Mm -hmm. But sometimes what people are saying, or the one that having those trauma, mm -hmm. we cannot hear it uh, very clearly because the one that having these traumas maybe doesn't able to say it. Might not be verbal yeah, about it. Yeah, it might not be verbal about it. Mm. Okay, so um, Riza, this also um, intriguing yeah. because many people re-experience the trauma uh, through intrusive thoughts yeah. mm. and some have flashbacks and many have nightmares mm. uh, with, with a lot of triggers. Mm -hmm. Will it disappear? Uh, the answer is it can, but, How? It, but it depends on many things. If the trauma, because you know, along maybe when if for example, if we live for sixty years or seventy years, mm -hmm. what are the chances that you meet another trauma? A lot, yeah, a lot. We can yeah. say maybe forty percent, fifty percent, sixty. Yeah. Mm. The problem is that we now scientists doesn't know yet which trauma triggers everything. For example, sometimes it comes from your childhood. Mm -hmm. Because the study from JAMA Psychiatry, actually the one that it did by the Australian government, 40% mm -hmm. 40, uh, 40 of adults in Australia are detected having mental issues because of childhood, childhood trauma. trauma. So what we are saying is that when you, what you what, what the Australian government wanted to do is how to prevent it or how to minimize it by detecting it. So mm. they, they did the survey study, they did all, they did brain imaging, they did biological aspect surveys, etc. So now what we are saying is that uh, we need to be able actually for us to understand that for parents especially to understand that the children need to be protected in terms of uh, their brain yeah. development. Mm. But to do that, you need to be able to have parents that also consciously able to do that. Yeah. But if the parent has al already a trauma also from the previous generation, mm -hmm. that could be a very problematic. So I'm seeing a, a circle that we yeah. cannot... Yeah. That we cannot, we might not we be, might able, not to be break. able to break. Yeah. But like, like yeah, that, that is the, the but with now, nowadays, from these years, these years of uh, Gen Z, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Z generation, yeah. who are all of them aware about mental health. So yeah. I think we can start from that. Mm -hmm. We can start to, to aware that, oh, doing this is wrong, doing that is wrong. It's not yeah. good for our future, the future of our children. Mm -hmm. So we need to stop it now. Mm -hmm. So when you raising those awareness, I think in the next few years we can see changes too. Okay. We, we need to break the cycle. We need break. to break the cycle. The first thing we need to come from the parenting habit that we have. All right. So millennials, you can do better. 
Good luck. Millennials, right? we can do better. Yeah. <laughs> right? All right. Should, um, should those who have dealt with childhood trauma seek counseling from therapists or psychiatrists? Because we talked about it. You said mm -hmm. usually we see it from that point of view, right? Mm -hmm. So is it that important for them to, to seek help? Yeah, because uh, our job is not to uh, soaking in the pain. Mm -hmm. But sometimes, Hans, when you have pain from mm -hmm. other people, you yeah. say, why he did this to me? Mm -hmm. What did I do wrong, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But our job is not to do that. Our job is to heal, actually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because everybody can give you trauma, everybody can give you pain, can give yeah. you stress. Yeah. So our job is to heal. How to heal? Different are many, many things. You can heal by yourself. For example, you consciously knowing that you have trauma. Maybe I have trauma. Mm -hmm. Some people can do that. Maybe I have this pain in my, in my mind, so mm -hmm. I have to mm -hmm. relieve it. So actually, he or she do different things. Do kindness mm -hmm. or many activities like sport, etc. to avoid having rumination, etc. Mm -hmm. But for most of the people, who trauma is very, very deep within themselves, maybe yeah. in subconsciousness level, that is, you cannot know it for sure, mm -hmm. they need to go to psychiatry mm -hmm. or psychiatrist or maybe psychologist mm -hmm. to be able to identify. Because if you can identify the most biggest or maybe few traumas in your life, you can, ah, that's why I get disappointed a lot because, for example, I'm, Sorry to say, maybe my dad disappointed me 30 years ago. Mm. That one you need to find. But the problem now, like uh, Yanis said, is that our mind is actually a piece of fragments of uh, memories. Mm. Oh. Not only the few, the visual, the visual, uh, visual images of the memories, but also the smell, but also mm. the oh. emotion. Yeah, wow. the emotion. That to is, that extent? Yes. That, that is, that is a, uh, scattered in your different part of your brain mm -hmm. yeah. with a glue molecule, what we call Kibra. Yeah, yeah. So okay. when you have trauma, it yeah. induces like a light bulb in, in Christmas night. Pop, 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 pop. And oh. then you can, oh, I have trauma. You can retract yeah. Yeah. I need to stay in my room. I don't want to go out. Yeah. Yeah, Something yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. okay. But many, 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 many uh, trigger can also induce yeah. the trauma that you have in your brain. Yeah, okay. So Riza, as a parent, yeah. <laughs> I've been listening to this and I'm, all I can think about is my daughter is eight, my other daughter is two, right? Yeah. So as a parent, what are some of the things that I should be aware of to reduce childhood trauma for my child? Because I don't want them to have a child, uh, childhood trauma too, or not too, but mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, in the future. Yeah. What is it that is So maybe important? the first one, actually, the first perspective, mm -hmm. no one is perfect. Yeah. Not even the parents, not even the children. Mm -hmm. Not even our neighbors, everybody. Yeah. No one is perfect. So what we can do is that beyond those imperfections mm -hmm. that we need to be to do is that we, we try to remember as long as and often as we can mm -hmm. that we need to be compassionate mm -hmm. to others, especially to our children. So when you are angry to your children, okay, yeah. it's, it's fine because uh, nobody is perfect. Yeah, yeah. Don't blame yourself, go back to the children. And then, sorry, son. Yeah. Sorry, my daughter. I, I raised my voices because I, to, because in office, blah blah blah. But mom loved you very much. Show to them mm -hmm. beyond those pain before mm -hmm. you have something that is really great that they need to. Because sometimes uh, what the children sees is that they are waiting for those moments of yeah yeah belonging belonging yeah. Okay. Feeling, feeling belong, close also, with the family, close with the parents. So I think that, that is the, the point of view. One of yes, the things yes. that you need to be, maybe not to now. To emphasize. Yeah, to yeah. emphasize. Maybe not, for example, Yanni was angry with the, the daughter. Yeah. Yes. And then uh, two minutes later, maybe not two minutes later, <laughs> sometimes she will remember it in yeah. the morning. And yeah, in yeah. the morning, sorry, my daughter last yeah, night, yeah. mother is really yeah. angry. Yeah, yeah. So I'm really sorry. but. What do you want as breakfast, yeah. for yeah. example? Yeah. Good yeah. luck, mother. Yeah. Thank <laughs> Lisa, you, thank, thank you, you yeah. so much. You're this very eye-opening. Yeah. Yes. And also the things that we need to understand as, um, as parents and yeah. also as people, as we might have our own trauma when it comes to that. And to understand that this is not only in, in our thought, but also it's biological. It's, yeah. it's, uh, it 
it actually connects to our brains and stuff like that. All right, thank you so much, um, molecular biologist Riza Arif with thank, thank, so thank you so much. And welcome back, please welcome back to our studio to uh, talk about uh, other things. And see the stories will continue after the break, so stay with us.